When last we left our beloved cast, Julie Gray had been burned by J.R. one too many times and offered to sell incriminating evidence to Cliff Barnes. J.R.'s associates, Jeb Ames and Willie Joe Gar, intercepted Julie's call and showed up at her apartment to intimidate her. Julie ran away from them and fell off the roof to her death, but since most of the circumstantial evidence led to Cliff, he was arrested for Julie's murder. Jock, always the master of introspection, blames Bobby's anger on Pamela and says that there's work to be done. He's also suspicious about Ray's injuries. You know, Miss Ellie, there's, there's some things going on around here that I just don't understand. Bobby tells Ellie he's sick of the Ewing screwing people over, but Ellie says Digger has always been a screw-up and would have turned out the same without Jock. Bobby suspects JR had something to do with Cliff being in jail and threatens to knock JR out if he crosses him. Pamela's still off of South Fork, and it turns out temporarily out of a job as the store doesn't want the bad publicity, so she's on leave. Bobby offers to work it out, but Pam says that she can't be around the Ewings. Cliff isn't all that excited to accept Bobby's help either, but tells him if he really wants to help, find the real killer. Willie, Joe, and Jeb are curious about what kind of documents Julie might have left behind, but JR assures them that it was just a crime of passion and that Julie has nothing on them. The preliminary hearing does not go well for Cliff, not only does it appear that Julie fell off the roof, but the coroner says she was both grabbed and hit before she died. This goes on for a while longer than it really needs to. Even the judge knows that this is dragging. The scene does work to bring new viewers up to speed on Julie's history though, as Dallas wasn't the huge hit out of the gate that it would become. Bobby, ever the supportive husband, offers to pick up Cliff's dry cleaning and mail so that Pamela can testify. In Cliff's darkest hour, he finds an envelope from Julie in his mail with the key inside of it. Bobby offers to hunt down the whereabouts of the briefcase that the key belongs to. You know Bobby's on the case because he's accompanied by the Dallas tuba music. Bobby retrieves the briefcase but decides to open it rather than return it to Cliff. And fortunately for JR, he does because it has a forged copy of Jock's will. Pam gets badgered on the stand and Cliff doesn't come off looking too good. We have a deposition from the waiter that you and your brother argued about an affair that he was having. Cliff won't even let his own attorney cross-examine her, but he's clearly pretty salty about the resentment Pam has for him. Bobby tells the secretaries to take the day off and shows JR the red file, including the will. JR tries to weasel out of it, of course, but Bobby holds his feet to the fire by reading the fake passage. Full drilling rights to all oil found in section 40 of South Fork Ranch as described in said paragraph. Bobby is devastated that his own brother would leverage his parents against the cartel, but JR swears innocence in Julie's death. Under threat from Bobby, JR's private investigator Dan Marsh spills the fact that he was double dealing by working with Willie Joe and Jeb too. When Bobby learns Willie Joe and Jeb are headed to Alaska, he calls in a favor from the airport security. Willie Joe and Jeb get yanked off their flight and Bobby shows them the evidence, convincing them to confess. Cliff is grateful but figures out JR knew all along and sat on exculpatory evidence. Tipped off the police, he set me up to take a murder rap. No. I don't think I'm gonna forget it. Bobby burns all of the copies of the will, which surprises JR because he could just blackmail him. Instead, Bobby says he finally sees JR for who he is. With you burning the will, you got nothing to hold over my head. First time in my life I know exactly what you're all about. Bobby and Pam celebrate Cliff's release, but Pam says she still can't see herself going back to South Fork, so Bobby storms off. And we're out. This concludes the big season arc they've been building with JR and the Red File. And while it's good to see JR over a barrel at the end of the episode, the actual execution of this episode leaves a lot to be desired. I know this is a fondly remembered double episode, but there are a lot of holes here. The first problem is that the trial doesn't really deliver any new information to the audience, so we're ahead of the narrative all the way. This would be fine if the writers were using our knowledge to generate suspense, but they don't. This is mostly to fill in people who had missed previous episodes. Not only that, but the judge makes clear that this isn't even of a trial, it's just a preliminary hearing. So the stakes aren't all that high either. Just an examining trial to determine if there's enough evidence to ship this all over to the grand jury to see if they want to indict. And even when Cliff is cleared, it's off screen. This case is dismissed and the defendant is free. No Bobby storming into the courtroom with Willie Joe and Jeb in tow. No courtroom dramatics. Just a lot of guest star Walter Brook looking hapless and incredulous at the judge for, I don't know, running a normal courtroom. Senor Honor, this has nothing to do with this case. Overruled. Did Miss Gray have access to all of you? Uh, no. 
also doesn't help that many of the story beats happen out of convenience rather than the characters earning them through cleverness or hard work. The episode works a lot better for Patrick Duffy, though, as he owns the last half. Bobby is the only character that gets much of an arc. Pam comes off as whiny and ineffectual, and that's always a bad sign for a Pam episode. Cliff is even more sad sack than usual, and JR's quote unquote scheme amounts to getting out of everyone's way and then congratulating himself. Bobby, though, starts the episode telling Ellie he wants to resign from the Ewings, but at the end, he winds up choosing the role of Watchman, defending the rest of the family from JR over reunification with Pamela. This winds up being a sort of hinge on which the writing staff hangs Bobby to explain why he can't just leave South Fork, even in the worst of times. Remember, in earlier episodes, Bobby offered to leave South Fork with Pamela and rent an apartment somewhere. Now he feels an obligation to stay and watch JR like a hawk. Bobby, I can explain that. To who? To daddy? To mama? Well, let's not bring them into this. JR, this is a forgery! The Red Cloud debacle is JR at his sleazy worst to this point, but it's just laying the groundwork for how reckless and cutthroat he'd become in season three, much to his own detriment. And the detriment of his family. We'll see that play out next season, but for now, Dallas rolls on with the last quarter of season two.